auction time. This is the 50 series auction. 5001. It's a death sight knife blade. This death sight was very hard to nap, which surprised me because it looked really cool. It looked like it was going to be buttery. It does nap buttery, but it's also very crunchy, which is a strange combination. Let's see, there's still some undetached flakes. All right, so this one is five and five eighths inches long. Yeah, I had a hard time thinning it down, so it got really narrow. And on, on my knives, I typically sharpen this the front uh, more than the back. The, the both sides are sharp, but the front gets a little bit more of a treatment on it to make it thinner. I spend more time on the front, but I do grind the hafting area. This is ground down right here, all the way around. I broke this this part off several times, but it it, it ended up okay. It is a bit narrow, more narrow than I wanted. It started out pretty fat, but yeah, I got all crunchy trying to thin it down. I leave this area thick in the hafting area so it won't snap, and I try to taper it down toward the point. That's why it's a little bit thick right there. Okay, all right. Five o zero two. This is a, a tri notch, what they call tri notch point, made from quartz crystal. Yep, another quartz crystal point. Now on this one, I left it a little bit thicker than I normally would. And the point's not as sharp as I normally make them because this can be worn as a pendant and you don't want it to snap. Right? You don't want the tip to snap off and you don't want the whole thing to snap in half. Now, how can you tell this is quartz crystal and not glass? Well, this one's a little bit harder to tell, but it's a little bit foggy down here. But I tried to get rid of all the non-clear areas, but there's a little bit of fog on this fog meaning just it's not as clear down here as it is up here not flake over grind the other kind of fog the uh, haze or whatever sometimes you you know you get that hazy spot that it, it's still nappable on the quartz crystal but it's not that great so I try to take most of it out but anyway yeah, quartz crystal. It is like a little over. Well, let's see. Inch, it's inch and three eighths. Yeah, inch and three eighths long. Yeah, this type of point was popular in the West. I was thinking of leaving it just triangular by itself, but I think it looks better with notches. Okay. 5003. This one is a very long Perdice point made from Texas chert that I don't know if it's heat treat or not. I think it's heat treat, but I'm not sure. I don't know where I got this root beerish looking stuff from uh, it is translucent there we go yeah I spent a long time on this one because these things will snap in half the focus on the camera today is pretty bad let's see this one is a little over two and three quarter Okay. Were there actual produce points like this? 
I think so. Yeah. Were they actually used that? I don't know. I don't know if these really long skinny ones were ceremonial or actually used. There's some of them that are broken, so I guess apparently some of them were used. Okay. 5004. This one is just a serrated point. These serrations here uh, were longer, right? But I blew off one side, so I had to make it even. But I think it turned out okay. I was going to be, it's another Perdice style, or it was going to be another Perdice style with longer, you know, instead of serrations here, it, there were going to be barbs here, okay? But like, why well, snapped off one of the barbs? being too aggressive with it so I had to take it down yeah it was originally going to be a, a serrated perdice point and it's not symmetrical you know these barbs on this side are longer than this side and it's not perfectly symmetrical but that's the way they used to make them they weren't always perfectly symmetrical is there a kind of point that looks like this in the archaeological record I don't know actually I think there might be I, just, I don't know. I just went with it. After I snapped off a barb, I just went with it and just left it. Now, I think this one is a, a raw chert, raw Texas chert. Yeah. Yeah, that tip there... Luckily, I didn't mess that up, and I know I, I didn't even snap off the tip when I was working on it. I was surprised. The only thing I snapped off was the barb. Yeah. I didn't even snap any of these serrations in here. They all worked out well. It's it's pretty good material for being raw, i got to say. All right. I think I measured it. Did I? I don't remember now. Two and five-eighths. Five oh zero five. Uh, this one was just a an experiment to see if this material was any good, and uh, it it is. It's a heat treat from I don't know where. It's a mystery chert. I did this one off camera. I was going to do it on camera, but part of this it was a it was a big chunk. Part of the big chunk had issues. And cracks and weirdness to it so I didn't nap it on video but as I got down further it started to get more tame and I was able to run some nice flakes on it yeah at first it was really crunchy and not cooperative but then as it got closer to the ending it started cooperating really well now this is similar to a lang tree point in Texas but uh, the lang tree does not have a rounded base like this. I left it rounded because I already lost too much length on this trying to get it tamed. You know, it was a, the rock was not that cooperative at first. So I'm not going to take that tip off the base after all that work trying to get it long enough. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what kind of chert that is. I don't even know if it's a Texas rock. But it's nice. I like it. I don't know if I have any more of it, but... There you go. Two inches, well, almost two inches. Like the 32nd of an inch below two inches. Right? Yeah. All right. 5006. Um, I showed this on video as a, as a unnotched by face but I said no nah, I need to notch it for the auction so I just put a bunch of notches in there in a uh, Central American style yeah Central America this would, would have been used as a knife or a little dart point if it was in the archaeological record I think there are points like this in the archaeological record that's why I say Central American style because I think some of the points in Central America actually have notching like this of this size okay this is supposedly a heat treat 
but I don't think it is. It's a Texas church. It's like one of those gravel churches. Stuff you find on the side of the road in a lot of cases, it's not that great as far as quality goes. But I was able to get it thinned down and sharpened up. It stalls easy though. Yeah, it stalled. It started to stall here. That's okay. I didn't need that notch to be that deep. But I usually try to end the notch with a nice pop out, but I couldn't on the base notch. And some of these side notches were not that cooperative. Right there. Let's see. Is that going to come out? No. Anyway. I like it. Let's see. 5007. This is on video. It's a video point. Um, I think this was the block to point. You know, or cracked block to point video. Yeah, worked out well. I didn't have the heart to put notches in it because the material was surprisingly good to work with. Now, this is an inclusion of some sort. I don't know what that is. Can you see it? I don't know what, what that is. It's just a little inclusion. Yeah, it is translucent around the edges. You can see some translucency in the main part. Yeah. Anyway, sharp all the way around. There's no grinding down here. It's all sharp. There might be some dull spots. But I just left it. All right. Let's see. Did I measure this la this one here? I didn't measure the other one either. Three and a quarter. And three and one eighth. Or three one sixteenth. Something like that. Okay. Oh, I forgot to get my rules out again. Let's see. My cheat notes. All right. Rules. These are my cheat notes. There's a better description of the auction in the description box below. There will be an auction every Monday, no matter what. Yep. Every Monday. It's going to be posted with rain or shine, holiday or no holiday. Always on Monday. Please look at my previous auctions to see how they work. If you are not able to reply or comment, you will not be able to bid. I can enter your bid for you, though, if you email me. Yeah, apparently YouTube has this thing where you have to have a channel in order to comment. Or you have to sign in and uh, create a little profile and stuff and get a channel set up. You don't even have to post anything. They just I think you have to have just a channel before you can comment. So that might stop some people from participating in the auction. Yep. I know that's a bummer. Okay. Auction 3J has a demo on how to bid. If you don't know how to bid and if you are able to bid, then look at the demo and they might help you on Auction 3J. Just type in Jack Crafty Auction 3J as a YouTube search. Hit the return button. It should bring that video up. Okay. And it's, uh, it's within the video that I have that demo. It's not the demo is not the entire video. The I think it's an auction video, yeah. And it has a demo in it. You bid in the comment section under one of my pre populated comments. Yeah, just look at the previous auctions, you'll see that I put comments in there with the item number and stuff. Okay? Just bid under one of those comments. Your comment is your bid, you comment under one of my comments. Alright? Uh, I'm not gonna read that. I will like your comment if I see it. That's important. That's how you know that I saw your comment or your bid. I will hit the like button. If you have more than one like, that means someone else likes it too. Hmm. Okay. Sometimes comments are not always visible. It may take a while for me to like your comment, but as the time approaches the end of the auction, I will check more frequently. Self-explanatory. Try not to bid at the last minute, you guys. Some of you guys are sneaky. Now, if you can get away with it, Okay, it doesn't bug me, but I, this is just a warning to please be aware that I'm using YouTube's time tracker. It's not always accurate. Okay, I use the time tracker because that's what everybody sees. So it, that's what, the way I keep it fair. 
All right, I use YouTube's time tracker. Everyone sees that time tracker. What is the YouTube time tracker? Well, when you make a comment, YouTube keeps track of how old your comment is. Yeah, there's a little indicator of how old your comment is. I use that to see if you're on time. Now, it can be up to two minutes off. Yeah, that's the problem. Lately, it's been good. I haven't had issues with it. Some of you guys are bidding at the last second, and I got to keep refreshing the the uh, the YouTube connection in order to see if you actually are on time. And sometimes the YouTube time tracker shows one time, and then, and then I refresh, and it shows a different time that's doesn't make any sense so um, it's kind of quirky the YouTube time tracker but that's the one that I use because everybody sees it like I said anyway hopefully that that's fair I want to be fair to everyone when they're bidding shipping is free in the US shipping internationally is not free nope if it's a lightweight package I'll add 10 bucks and if it's a heavy package I'll add 20 bucks if you're the winner okay I simplified the the uh, international shipping. International shipping is a lot more expensive than this, but, you know, I'm going to discount it for you. It's just, but it is, in some cases, very expensive. I don't know. I never know how expensive it's going to be until I actually go to the post office because the international rates change. Some guys live out in the boondocks. Some some shipping has tax added to it, that kind of thing. So I never know. Let's see. So I had to simplify it to there so I can charge you up front. I will determine what's heavy and what's light. Okay. I will provide tracking numbers. I accept PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, checks or money orders, or a payment by electronic invoice. Yeah, I can send an electronic invoice to your email. You just click the link, and then when your link opens up, you can enter your credit card information and pay for it that way. It's a, it's a service from PayPal, okay? It allows you to use a debit card or credit card online. Let's see. Winners will be announced at 9.01 p.m. Eastern Time. The auction ends at 9 o'clock at the top of the hour exactly on Eastern Time. I, I wait one minute before I start announcing the winners, okay? Now, it depends on your time zone, though. The auction ends at 8 p.m. Central if you're on Central Time. It ends at 7 Mountain or 6 Pacific, depending on your time zone. So the auction ends at different times for people in different time zones. Okay? Uh, you will be notified in the comments section if you are the winner. Please email me your info if you are new. Yeah, this is very important. Sometimes people get confused and they think that I have a way to remind you that you've won. Well, I do, but it's not like you think. I remind you in the comments section. So you, you need to be paying attention to the comment section. That's where I will announce the winner. I'm not going to send you an email or anything like that if you're new. I don't have your information and that kind of thing. So you need to email me. Now, once you've done business with me and uh, for some reason you're not responding and you forget you're the winner, yeah, I can send you an email or send you a message or something to remind you that you won. But if you're new... You need to make sure you email me if you've won. And please pay attention to the comment section. All right. Okay, that's it for the cheat notes. You can look down in the description box for a better description if you're into that. It's a very, very nice day today. I hope you guys had a, a nice weekend. I hope you liked the items. And good luck.